I'm on this side of the camera. How you doing? Look what I got. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Woo! Here's a fire. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Welcome to SVC. And this is what we've been doing this week, cleaning out all of our storage bins and getting rid of things. Fire is a wonderful thing for getting rid of things. So our model is gone. And uh, that's motivated by everybody that thinks, oh, it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's tragic, it's at the end. Oh, come on, people. Would you really quit that easy? No, you wouldn't do that. Not after 10 years of investment. So that's not the deal. Oh, wait a minute. I better go check on that just a little bit. Make sure it doesn't spread because our grass is really dry. My neighbor set some fireworks off the other day. Now nah, we're good. Set some fireworks off the other day and uh, lit a little fire out there in the, in the uh, park. I think it's a great thing for every teenager to learn what it is to light a fire, right? And then have to run over to the neighbor's house, me, and uh, put the fire out. Good morning. All right. This is Betsy is with us this morning. She has some things to sell, I bet. And Paige is back over there. She's watching for her questions and uh, throwing you, you ugly people off. Let me show you. Uh, you got something you want to show? Me? You. Is it already time? Yeah, it's already time. I'm not waiting around this morning. I gotta kill this. Well, let's start with the pricing thing. Okay. Can you okay. kill the sound on that? I thought I did. I thought I hit the mute button over here somewhere that. No, that's. That would shut yeah, up the computer. You gotta do this and that. Now it's muted. You know why can't you have a cheap computer like the rest of us? It is a cheap computer. That's an antique. That is an antique, but that's why it's a cheap computer. Okay. That's what I have. What? A do billy, we have any more of those? The bill draft. You know, we happened to find a little cubby. Is that what they live in? A little cubby of bilge. bilge rats. And <clears throat> the problem is they're not cheap because, you know, we just can't get them anymore. Oh, they're, so they're an endangered species They're an endangered now. species. They're breeding. But, <laughs> but their cast-offs do not look anything like Genetic them. mutants. Yes, yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, but for those of you that have been dying for an original billy... We do have a few left, but the price is, as I said, it's a bit pricey. How pricey is it's it? It's $100 a rat. But the boat's been built. Why do we need $100? Because this is the Sea Chest Foundation. I kidnapped everything. I kidnapped all the merch. Because the Sea Chest Foundation, of course, is that nonprofit organization that's here to raise money so that... Um, we can bring in the scientists and the equipment and the stuff so that Doug just lives on his boat. But anyway, we like lease the boat and put our scientists on it and they sail around and, and that's the really exciting part. Right. So basically all the merch now is, sea chest is going to Sea Chest. There is still some things on the Amazon store that, um, that while they last, I may pull them off at some point. Amazon just sucks so much money out of it. It's just yeah. really frustrating. So I'm going to take over Merchant again because I'm a lot more fun than Amazon. But anyway, so now the new store is at the seachestfoundation.org forward slash shop. Um, and there'll be links and I'll get in and, and I'll get everything linked over so you'll get there. But that's where these guys are. And like I said, there are not very many. I think I have 10. Wow. So, um, $100 You're, you're each. really paying for CGS Foundation, and we appreciate you doing that. It's going to make a, a difference in a lot of researchers. Will. So anyway, this is the original Billy. Billy. And they're, oh, they're soft and cuddly. And um, Did you read the tag? And they're filled with transparent beads. Beans or beads? I think they're I think, beads. No, I think it's beans. Oh, they are beans. Yeah, it's transparent beans. The tag what literally kind of says that. What bean is transparent? Chinese beans, apparently. All right, let me, let me show you what we've been doing, okay? Because why are you going to put a video up? Because we're doing really boring work. And thank God, Francis uh, Estrella, he's the, the hobo, uh, has been with me for the past three weeks. And I've just learned to love Francis. Because here's, let me show you out here. See, I'm hoping I can get all that on the boat because... That rack, that used to be a school bus frame and a rack there with all the metals on it. There used to be another school bus sitting over there. Those are gone. We have cleaned out. Here's the boxes that are left over from all this. So everything that I got that I hope is going with me is in one of these boxes. The ROV, 
It's been covered up for the past four years. It's ready to go out. Still needs programming on that. I got things. Oh, I got the Tormach taken apart. So it's uh, in a, well, we got to haul that back into the engine room. So it goes on the boat after launch because it adds too much weight. We're not trying to push the weight up too much. And then this room, you know, food storage containers and pumps and paint and chain and my hydraulic hoist and some navid lights and little cubbies and that sort of stuff. Everything left here is going on the boat. Let me show you that. And we got, there's an attic up above this building. It's completely cleared out. There's an attic above my house. That's completely cleared out. Empty, okay? A serious, you know, I underestimated how much junk you can put into two attics and three storage containers over the past 17 years. I built this house in 2006 with the intention of building that boat. And so I've been storing stuff away, squirreling it for a long time. We're taking the drill press. We're probably going to cut it down. I'm probably going to take a lot more stuff than I need, but that's always been the plan is, you know, weed it down as you go. If I don't use it in the first three months, then it's probably off the boat. You know, somebody comes by, they'll go home with it. What else you got, Miss Betsy? Got it already. Already. Man, I'm, I'm, I gotta move along here today. You guys need to start thinking about your ideas for launching the boat. We've had some great ones. Oh, I have to model that? Uh -huh. Can you put it on or hold that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, I, I have had one of these on before. Can you wear Look them? Look what can we've you, got. Can you wear them in the... Uh, uh, you could do this as a hairnet, as a grill cook. You could? Sure. Yeah, or you could wear it under your welding helmet, or you could wear it under your on your motorcycle. Very stylish. Or, and it's cool. It's wicking fabric. Oh, it's got the uh, bilge rat on there. There you go. Okay. How okay. cute is that? Tell them how lightweight and comfy it is. It is. It is very thin material. And you even have a big head. And it, I do have a huge head. But it'll adjust down because it has these great little ties here in the back, you know, just like the real ones. I mean, it is a real one. This but is awesome. anyway. There, okay, you're gonna ask me how much it is, and I can't. No, I don't remember. remember. I, don't, I don't care. This, this, is, this is reasonably priced over, over it the It is, price. I think it's like 15 bucks, maybe. Reasonably overpriced. Yeah. Because it supports a good cause. And it's over at the Sea Chest Foundation. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you all asked for these for years, and it just took forever to get them. Yeah. But okay. we're calling it the Skull Cap. So, very good. I appreciate okay. it. And I gotta say a big thank you to Bessie, too. We had this fantastic party. And Betsy organized that whole thing, and she didn't get to enjoy a moment of it. But I learned something really cool about Betsy. She can go from, where's Charlie? Charlie needs to be down here now to give her a mic. And she goes, well, thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. It's lovely. Because I'm really a nice person. You do a fantastic job of switching gears from get it done to having fun. That's and called public speaking, radio, and TV broadcasting. Yeah. Paid off. Such an exciting you never think these, these old jobs are going to come back to haunt you, but they do and they pay off. So it was a lot more fun than web and, design. And, and we got Paige doing questions, so she's tracking them. All right, give me a question. What should we answer? Um, Richard Beebe wants to know if the port has put a deadline on launch. No, the port has. Yeah, they can't hear her. So yeah, if she doesn't okay. scream it, you have to repeat. I'll it. repeat the question. Okay. The port does the, the port does not put or has not put a deadline on launch. Um, they've been gracious to the, to uh, no end. They've extended our lease out, I'm supposed to have a contract, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, and we asked for 90 days and we can actually move the boat over to a, another location if need be, just to get it out of the way. Should they need that hard pad for a paying customer? Cause I'm not a paying customer, so I'm not acting like a paying customer. We were out there as, uh, as their guest and, uh, working hard. Now the, the, uh, let's talk about insurance. Uh, Paige has been helping a lot. Uh, on insurance and she, she, we actually found through her friends of brother and friends of such, we actually know the guy now um, that helped write the policies for the uh, Tulsa Port of Catoosa's uh, review of insurance. And so he, uh, he apologized because uh, we, we probably got caught up in the net that he configured. But it's, an, it's just, it is what it is. And we're gonna get around it. There are, uh, we have um, uh, Brad, uh, who's working on insurance with us and he's not, we're not at a dead end with that yet. You know, you go to one, our, our agent goes to one underwriter, then that one doesn't has a problem. Then we go to another one, then another one, then another one. Um, so we're down to, uh, we got one more that we're working with him. 
And we have uh, another insurance carrier who we haven't heard a no from yet, so they're still out there. And then we have uh, an engineering solution, which is really interesting because engineers uh, carry general liability. And uh, so there's a company that uh, they're getting their general liability increased to $3 million, And um, then we can contract to them and they launch our boat. So basically, they're responsible for anything going wrong. It's kind of like they temporarily own the boat. So that's an option too. We looked at a letter of, um, what's it called? A letter of credit. You know, somebody wants to gamble with us and uh, put up $3 million in a letter of credit. That works too. But the insurance route is really the better one. Um, uh, and a letter of credit hasn't come through yet. Doesn't mean that it won't. Uh, somebody out there is sitting on, you know, if I had $15 million, you know, maybe I'd give you a letter of credit for uh, $3 million for a week. Um, but if that doesn't happen, I think it's going to, it'll happen eventually through insurance or through an engineering general, uh, what's it called? General liability policy. So um, I've learned a lot about insurance. I really hate learning a lot about insurance. I hate it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And you just, it's just the next thing. You just work through that problem just like you have all the others. Um, you must add anything else to insurance, even though they can't hear you sitting over there? No? Okay. <laughs> she said no. Um, what else is going on then? You got anything else you want to sell? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. What do you got? It's time again. It's time again. Okay. It's cutting through this. Still going to talk about ideas for how to launch the boat. Some of these are really good. Look what I have. Oh, yeah. Now, if you paid the high dollars to come to the party. You got this for free. And you know who you are. Then you got lots of really cool stuff. Here, I'll hold it up. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to put these up for sale. These are the 2021 commemorative Focus. launch oh, it's backwards. challenge coin. Yep. And the other side. And on the front, it's a really pretty thing of the boat moving. And on the back, it's the, the wheel with an octopus. And it has, as <laughs> you can't see it. As my little van a rat says, who advertises yeah, like, blah, this blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it says all the Doug stuff, blah, blah, you know, blah. Dumb, whatever. Surround yourself with good friends, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, they are like the other challenge coins. They're 20 bucks. Okay, shipping's pretty cheap on them. You can just go first class mail, and they're not too bad. So, um, and they're over at the seachestfoundation.org <laughs> forward slash shop. Shop. Okay. But All right. they are beautiful, and they'll also fit those, those keychains if you already have one. Oh, yeah, the keychain the holder. One. Yeah. And, those and when these are gone, they're gone because I'm not doing any more. And I don't know how many Doug did. And what did Vanna Rat say? I don't know. Doug ordered them and oh, it's yeah. kind of like hose clamps. I had a, <laughs> I, a somebody crap. a long time ago offered me a screaming good deal on hose clamps. You would not believe, you cannot give hose clamps away at a garage sale, okay? Or a yard sale. And you know, it's really sad too. We didn't have a lot of good turnout at the yard sale. So those of you who did, thank you very much. And uh, they got screaming good bargains on stuff. I mean, um, it's, it's, it worries me about, you know, how many people, if this you stuff had been on sale. Back on page they're like looking at her legs. Okay. Oh my God. There you go. They're commenting yeah. on her. <laughs> Are they really? The, uh, the, well, it got cut up and, and we hauled it off to the scrapyard. Uh, see, several people worked on that, but if Francis and I finished the thing off, chopped it all up with the plasma torch, the air plasma torch. That's that is one tool that is definitely going with us is the plasma torch because okay, it's fantastic. Asked, you know, insurance, but you have to have it. This is why you have to have yes, it. Yes. This... Do you remember the Freddy cats? <laughs> right? We love these Freddy cats. I actually have a few of these. The truth is you do have to have insurance, but that's only because you have to operate around people who are afraid. It well, doesn't well take blood. a lot of courage to launch a steel boat into a port, but it takes a little bit. And if you have a system that is devoid of a little bit of courage, now I think what that means, Freddy Cat is what that means. You gotta have insurance. So yes, you do. And if you're gonna go into marinas with people but who you have- don't want, But the only reason you need the insurance, yeah. this is what's, what's important in this. Yeah. The reason you need insurance is in order to make other people happy. That's true. Because it isn't yes. going to keep you safe. There is no guarantee yeah. that insurance is going to like save your life or keep you safe. And so what happens is 
you, here's the thing that's interesting. If he hadn't gotten so out of hand and made this boat so freaking big, okay? This is the problem. If we had stopped at about 55 feet. Then it wouldn't have been a problem because we could have backed any buddy boat ramp and yeah. just been gone and nobody cares. Yeah. The only reason they care is you've got corporate people and politicians and government entities that are that are basically got their knickers in a twist. And that's really the And they really have their knickers the in a twist because their boards have their knickers in a twist because yeah. their stockholders have their knickers in a twist. But it's like, as they said, once thing. we get past the little buoy, they don't give a shit. No, they really don't. So they only want you to have, how far is that? It's not even a quarter of a mile, it's is 500 it? 500 yards. 500 yards. So we need 500 yards of insurance, yeah. which is absolutely incredible. And the, the, the strange thing is, and Paige and I were talking about this too the other day, is you'd think it's like, okay, $7,000, no, we're not going to do that. And then it's like, so they tell us no, instead of telling us 15000 and let us say no. Because if they said 15000 I'd say yes, fine, I'll well, do it. They, you know, that's just, it's, it's... You know, a lot of it has to do, some of this has to do, we've learned about, is actuarials. Um, there's not a lot of people, obviously, that uh, have built boats this size uh, at, in their home. Um, you know, DIY. There's a lot um, of diesel ducks, and what are they, 50 feet? They're about 45, 50 feet. So they plop right down a boat ramp. They go down gone. a boat ramp. So I'm locked in because I have to go down, I have to be launched by this crane. And I, I talk about that in a video I'm going to put up here in a little bit after this. We'll put up a video that talks about, shows you the waterway around us. Um, and basically it comes down to this. There's no private land along this waterway. It's all Corps of Engineers. This is a, a navigational channel so it's maintained by the corps of engineers and they own the shorelines back away from it so there's no farmer that owns land that i could just shift down the shoreline and they maintain the shorelines and the trees and all that stuff they're not gonna let you move anything um and that's right that's public land um there is no there are two boat ramps um as a crow flies they're within one of them is like within a mile and a half as a crow flies it's 10 miles over the road but it launches into a a, a tributary to the river and it's about a foot and a half deep and we draft six and a half feet and it's about 700 yards out to the end so we'd have to dredge 700 yards of channel probably not going to happen easier just to wait and be patient and let the insurance thing work its way out we could go down to the other boat ramp same problem with it uh it it's it's well there's another one but it's it's got this tiny little road Seeker wouldn't even fit. The wheels are 23 and a half feet. Wide, wouldn't even fit. These channels are only nine feet deep, right? The, when you're out in the and channel, it's nine feet. how wide is it? The, the channel Maybe. width is dredged. We, this is the worst part of the river, uh, according to Brandon, and I'm sure he's true because there's just no reason for them to, it's narrow. It depends. How, how wide? Okay. Maybe, it, maybe maybe 60 feet. Okay, so we went, we went in. We did the other side before we ever got to the oh, water. yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's. Yeah, you can't go down and, and slide across. You there's, can't sit on a barge and go out there. There's, there's even if, a. If the barge, if you're sitting on a barge. Okay, now that is an even, idea. But the water's here's, not deep enough. Here's the deal with the barge. We can be loaded onto a barge as project cargo. I mean, we've looked at all these these possibilities. Uh, you can't do anything with that barge in the river, but you can go 100 uh, uh, miles down to, oh, no, it's not 100 miles, just a day, well, it's, yeah, it's 100 miles. There's down a to, lake down the way. Go down to Kerr, and Kerr is a lake, and we'll be on Kerr eventually, and Kerr is a lake that has, um, you could sink the barge out from underneath you and then salvage the barge back. Uh, it's a deck barge, that's easy, even with a grain barge is capable. People really don't want their barges sunk. See, here's the problem. You still need insurance because if you're going to lift it off with another crane, that crane's in the same bind. They need that p &I insurance on your cargo. You still have to insure your cargo. So not only are you incurring the cost of the tug and the barge, but also you still need insurance on the boat. It is still a possibility, but it's more complicated. Even though the barge company has insurance, they want you to have insurance. And this got explained to me by uh, an agent who was very patient, very nice guy. I can't remember his name right now. Anyway. Real nice guy. I met him, talked to him through a barge company, you know, and somebody gave me their, hey, just talked to our agent, and I talked to the agent. The agent was fantastic. Three Forks Marina. Someone just mentioned Three Forks three Marina. Three Forks Marina. We'll get to Three Forks <laughs> Marina. Um, the agent says, even if they have insurance 
to transport you and if they have insurance to cover when they think they still want you to have insurance because if they happen to sink your boat or your cargo they drop it over the side somehow and it's gone they know that if you have insurance the chances are you are going to go after your insurance company for the money not them because if you go after after them, you could get in a pissing match, you could call the U.S. Coast Guard, and I literally had this said to me, and you can file a complaint, and the U.S. Coast Guard could come out and do something really stupid, which would be impound their boats because they were involved in this accident, and then they would lose the access to their own equipment. So, there you have it, okay? It's a world of fear and paranoia, and Wait, let me get it's not getting good. Again. Now, Three Forks Marina. Three Forks Harbor has scaredy cat. Three Forks Harbor has a 110-ton travel lift, they have a dual lane uh, ramp. It's in excellent condition. Problem is, it's about 45 miles down highway. They're not going to let a 23 and a half foot wide load go down a highway. I know that because I checked on it like 12 years ago when I started all this thing. That's not doesn't happen. Now you can go down back roads, but the permits for that and the work for that would be massive. It'd be days to get it down through the back roads to avoid the highway. So that would be very cost prohibitive. And then. You're at another port that has the same insurance policies as the port we're at. Because they're kind of, like, they're kind of the same. Yes. They, have they, a, they all work together. Everybody has fear issues. So let's just, uh, you know, wait for the insurance guys or the engineers to uh, do their work. And we'll get it covered with insurance and we'll go in. But what meanwhile, I got. I got. the weather's cooling off. Ooh, the mouse. That's not a mouse. That's not a mouse. I'm sorry. It's Darwin. This is Darwin. Darwin, the adventurous builder. The adventurous builder. Is so we are getting ready to have adventures. Okay, what's the what's the next thing about launching a boat that I didn't hit with all that? Is there anything else on there? I still like the balloon idea. Well, she can read. Let's do Darwin. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have a... So, Darwin... Oh, Darwin. You haven't sold Darwin yet. No, they don't even know what... I did... I sold Darwin. My God, you make me sound like a slave owner. Okay. <laughs> this is Darwin. Darwin, <clears throat> Darwin is the newest little bilge rat, and his, his whiskers are a little bit askew, and he's got the cute, look at this, the funny part is, he's got one of these sleeveless shirts, and for those of you, when I was selling the party tickets, you know, I said, I said, you can't, men cannot wear sleeveless t-shirts, because I don't want to see their hairy armpits, right. I'm telling you, there were Darwins everywhere, there were. hairy was, armpits and all, he was hot, but anyway, he is the cutest little thing, he's only about three inches tall, he fits in your pocket. He fits in your backpack. He's a cranium and, problem. And, well, no, he doesn't. He's got, look at this bondage. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. It's a keychain. It's a, it's a whatever you want it to be. It can be a zipper Careful. pull. Careful. It can be, I don't know. It can be a <laughs> ring. It can be a nose <laughs> ring you could wear. You could wear yeah. a nipple ring. Anyway, Darwin is the adventurous Bill Drat. His mother is very clearly Regina. His father... Yeah, he's got Billy's eyes. He's got Maurice's nose. They breed like bunnies, you know, down in the bilge. And and he's the newest thing. He's he's affordable. He's only ten dollars. Ten dollars. And he ships again, first class, pretty darn cheap. So, um, but he's the newest guy, and he's just as cute as a bug. And he thinks he's like Vanna White. So he's advertising. He's a spokesperson. Yes, he's the spokes rat. Okay. For all the products over at the chess foundation and you too can have a darwin or five or ten or twenty everybody's gonna want a darwin how could you not he is the cutest little guy is he not cute he is cute he is cute and he is like the total opposite of this yes <laughs> um <laughs> darwin is adventurous darwin is going to go see the world darwin is going everywhere and darwin will send back videos awesome us. so yeah so got to get your darwin seachestfoundation.org forward slash shop. shop what do you got Paige? any questions um, you might want to explain why you can't move it off the road so. okay yeah i hit that a little bit we can't go over the road because it's costly there's uh, between us and the place where we'd want to go well first off you know you, you can't there's not a boat ramp that works for us uh, the closest one is is like the it's the it's Three Forks Harbor, which is operating exactly like the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. In other words, if you don't have insurance, you don't launch your boat there. And if you to get insurance, you have to have your boat in the water. Oh, that was one of the ideas too: is somebody to build a tank around the boat and, and perform it. 
Hey, you know we might, okay? Uh, we, have, uh, we have some ideas about how to do that. I don't think it's gonna come to that. But if, you know, an, an actuarial or a, uh, what do they call, they're not called the, an underwriter says, hey, we, we gotta have the stability test, which is kind of retarded because I'll show you in a video here, it's like the, the boat's not gonna be unstable. It's got 12 tons of lead at the very bottom. And it's gonna be like rock solid. So, uh, but if they wanted that, yeah, we would do it. We'd build a, a tank around it. Probably uh, the best idea I heard was uh, Zach's and it was uh, um, shipping containers. You know, you take a bunch of, sh you take shipping containers, you go around it and put a line and fill it with water. Uh, water's not nearby. Uh, and so that would be, a, you know, there's lots of other things about that, but you know, that's what it comes down to doing. That's what we'll do. That'll take a lot of time. And so we're not interested to do that. I'd like to be down, you know, I'm not in any rush to get to the Gulf because it's still hurricane season. So the idea is to, you know, take our time and poke down the river this uh, fall. And uh, we're still on schedule for doing that. Come this way a little bit and go down. And go down. They want our legs. Look at our oh, legs. I'm, they get really excited. Guys, you need to grow up, okay? The, um, um, what else is it? I can show my legs. Here, there's that. How's that? And that's sexy. Well, that didn't take long. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of those. There's stubby. Oh, look, there's Watson. Oh, there's Watson. Watson's over for visiting for the day. Oh, Watson's bored. So, what? The wheels. Removing the wheels? Oh, when the crane picks it up, it's in slings. So I have two 25 foot long, 30 ton slings. And Watco's decided to put mine together back at the pilot house because they're long enough to clear the roof of the pilot house. Spreader bar goes across the top of the pilot house. And then they have a 50 ton sling that they'll use up front. So it's like going to be hugely over slinged. And then when it comes up, it leaves the wheels behind and uh, it'll sit on the keel. So we'll drop all the forward uh, stuff off of it uh, too. So all that stuff gets stripped away before the crane. And you'll see it in this next video of lifting coils of steel out of a barge. That's the same crane that, you know, will pick us up, move us over and set us down into the water. So all that stuff comes off prior to, uh, oh, thanks for the donation. Comes, comes back to, um, you know, it's off before the boat even goes in the water. We could actually, you know, I've thought this thing through so many times. We, if we did go down a ramp, we could go with the wheels on and separate from them because we have a crane on the boat and we can pick that stuff back up. So it actually would be possible for us to uh, lift that stuff off and, and uh, do it ourselves, but it's not going to come down to that. What else? Yeah, stacking it. Yeah, we looked, we asked about stacking it. They said no. Um, they, we may have to change their minds on that one, but uh, stacking insurance is when you get multiple people involved and each of them has like a million dollars general liability until you get five or six of them so that there's five million dollars. And we asked that question and they said no. Now, you know, they may say yes later on, but we're going to try and do it exactly what they want to begin with. Anything else we've done? You're never oh, I know what I got to do. I'm hungry. You're hungry. You wanted a snack. Be right back. Okay. Don't say goodbye to them yet. I'm not saying goodbye I'm to them yet. Them. You're not done with them? You got more to sell? Somebody walked around the front of them. Okay. Let's check on the fire. Okay. Oh, it's just. Okay. What did we leave off on? Because well, look. I don't know. You go out there and you get frozen. Look at this. Huh? Marshmallows. Would you like one? Oh, you. Oh, I just love marshmallows. Ooh. Mm. So anyway, you sold the house to some nice person. Oh, yeah. And. The house is sold. Which means y'all need to not come by here anymore. Yeah. Drive-bys, guys. And you can't go out to the port and see us there. You sure? These are wonderful. Mmm. After burning my lips on, on fajitas. Mm, these are so much better. So I was talking about fires. Fires are wonderful things that we guys just sit around and tell stories. And we have this, this artificial connection between us right now where I'm talking to you and it looks like we're at a fireplace, but here's the deal guys. I can't see you. I don't know who you are. I don't know anything about you. So when you think we have this relationship, we don't. What we have is a connection through the internet. And someday maybe you want to be crew and come on my boat and work with us. And I get to be your friend. We get to be the best of chums. Maybe we hate each other. Doesn't matter. But until that moment, you don't have that connection with a human. So what I'm stressing here is go out and find connections with people, real people, not people like me on the internet, real people. 
family, friends, people you need to say you, you love them to, those are the people in your life you need to pay attention to. And pay attention to marshmallows. They're wonderful. Oh. Mm, okay. What's left? Anything? Um, yes, I do have other things for sale. Hmm? If, oh, God, you can put my eye out. You put your eye out. Just turn the, turn the phone, you eat. All right. Just... Here, what do you got to sell? You know, I have lots of other things coming online. I've got some things Richard Day has made mm. that are really stunning. Beautiful using work. boat salvage materials. Yes. Like the steel and the cedar and, and the stuff CNC like that. And the CNC plasma cutter. Yes. Yep. And um, I have, oh, I have turtles that you made. I don't know if there, I'm sure there's crabs, crabs in there too. Yeah, there's crabs That in we there. had on the party. I have a couple of the party boxes left that I'm going to put goodies in. I'm telling you, there is going to be some cool stuff coming online to the sea chest foundation.org forward. And we appreciate your support. And I'll, I'll even do a pitch. You can still go. There's a link in this uh, description that'll take you to Amazon and they have Amazon smile. You can sign up for that and you can, a portion of your purchase at Amazon will then be donated to the nonprofit organization of your choice. So you can do your, your, your pet stuff, your whatever. And if you wish, you can do Sea Chest Foundation. And that will build a little kitty for us because we get a check from them about once every three months. Three months. And it's been great. We got 500 last time. Yeah. So and that was wonderful. Doesn't cost you a thing, and it helps support some researcher in the future. So consider doing that. Okay. We done? Um, What's your dream destination a scientist might ask you to go to? Oh, that is a good question. Dream destination a scientist might ask you to go to. Oh, my God. Um, oh. Oh, hands down, Auckland Island. There's a fantastic book that I just love. Have beaches there. Yeah, it does. It's rock, oh. and it's and there's rock. lots lots of shipwrecks. Oh, it's again. just it's just it's this in the South Ocean. It's about oh, 300 miles south of uh, New Zealand, and the book is called uh, Island of the Lost, and it, it's a true story in the 1830s, maybe shipwrecks there and people dying and people surviving with the skills that they have. I mean, it's a maker's dream come true. You know, it's like it's survival of the, the one that knows how to light a fire and, and skin a seal and that sort of thing. Fantastic book, Auckland Island. And many thanks to Charlie, say. Charlie? And by the way, if you don't want to wait to go with Doug, Charlie puts together these really cool trips. Oh, we're going to promo Charlie now? Oh, my God. He's going I to Greece. Go so bad. You want to go to Greece. I do. And if he sell enough slots he's on his charters, you think he's going to... selling scuba things. I know, because only he sells enough that he gets to go for free. Charlie is a fantastic... He's also a board member for the Sea Chess Foundation. And he's our, like, one of our... We have two official captains. Yeah, the other one is Brandon Phillips. A big shout-out to Brandon, too. He is a fantastic friend and also the guy that's going to teach me how to navigate down a river. Charlie's the guy that's going to teach me how to sail the ocean. <laughs> He's going to teach you how to sail the lake. I don't know. I do it to the lake. We're on our own. Uh, oh, well. Oh, you know the lakes. Betsy can do the and lakes. And for those of you that bought my paintings, thank you so much. I'm hoping to get more done if I can just find time between this merch stuff. And for those of you that haven't found your hidden talent, try it. Who knew she could paint so well with with uh, watercolors? But uh, she did a fantastic job. I just you can find. Uh, get away from me I think there's still now. links over there on uh, on the Facebook. Facebook, the SV Seeker group on Facebook. If you have an account on Facebook and you actually use it and look like a real person, we let you into that group, and it's a very positive group. So if you wanted to go over there and bitch and nag, and you're gonna get thrown off in a heartbeat. So don't oh, even bother. Obviously, we're not. Uh, we didn't have a party on September 11th. Oh yeah. That festival, pirate yeah. festival, we kind of like, you know, I was like, it's bad enough well, doing one thing with no boat. Trying to get the boat in the water. Too. Yeah. So we'll do something else later on down the river. Um, and the seachessfoundation.org will keep you up on that. Okay. How's that? That's good. Anything else, Paige? Don't be a Frady Cat. Be a no. Darwin. All right. Be a Darwin. Be a Darwin. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. i got to put my glasses on to see what little button turns it off. If you got other questions, uh, post them on the video that we're getting ready to put up now. It's going to go live on uh, YouTube for all you bilge rats out there. Okay. We love our bilge rats. We love our bilge rats because they have a sense of humor. Fish.